So when I was in school, I decided to join Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Now, there you go. this right here was over a decade ago, probably 12 years ago. I know some of y'all may say I still look exactly the same. And not only did I participate in the hazing process, but I also pledged people. I was what you call the DP. That's me right there. And DP, if you don't know what that is, that's the Dean of Pledges. So that means that you're primarily responsible for bringing over an entire line. But you know, as time passed on, I graduated, and one day I ran across a book. And I looked at the cover of the book because somebody had mentioned it to me while I was in school, but you know, I just blew them off. And that book was called The Stolen Legacy, written by George G.M. James. How many of you read this book? And then I started to realize that with the knowledge that I gained from this book, because when I read something, I don't just do what some people, some people read information or they come across information and even though they know it's true, they discard it and keep doing what they normally do. If I read something I know it's true, then I got to start living that truth. So I started to wonder how is it that African people can go to college as Dr. Bruce Bridges would say, can be enrolled as an African, but graduate as a Greek. You know, it just didn't make much sense. How can we pay homage to people who stole African knowledge and people who don't even look like us? But let's talk about how the Greeks came into Africa. Everybody said, well, the Greeks, they weren't so bad. Let's go to the period that was called the Hellenistic period. So you call yourself the Panhellenic Council, but the Hellenistic period was the worst period for African people. Because it's during this period when Alexander came into Africa, 332 BC, and conquered Egypt. It was Alexander who took over. And this is where you start to see the turning point from the power that Africans had in ruling the world that they had ruled since we've been for over 250,000 years. This is only 2,000 some odd years ago. Now people want to say that the Greeks were black. But this right here is a statue of Alexander that they made of him during this time period that's in the Cairo Museum. We can clearly see that this is a European right here. When the Greeks came in, they came in the same way they always come in. They came in as mercenaries trying to help us fight off the Persians. But then they turned their back on the Africans. Because when they came in, they saw the knowledge the African people had. So they went through and they stole the scrolls from all the different temples down in the south, down in Emperor Sut. It put a soot down in Luxor, or I said, and they took these scrolls back up to Alexandria, and they used this knowledge to build what was called the Alexandria Library, the greatest library in the ancient world. This is where the rape of African knowledge and the rape of the African mind first took place. It didn't take place on the slave plantation. And they used this knowledge to build themselves up and to start their own civilization. And they got books. People don't even know how many books were actually in this library. Some say over 700,000 scrolls were in this library. But this is the knowledge that had been attained for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years by African people observing what they saw in the universe and what they saw in nature. And they used this knowledge to build up their own Greek philosophy. But like our brother George E.M. James taught us in The Stolen Legacy, it teaches us that Greek philosophy was stolen Egyptian philosophy, what we call stolen comedic philosophy, or stolen African philosophy. So let's go into this book by George M. James, where he says that they, the Greeks, have been falsely praised and honored for the centuries by the world as its greatest philosophers and thinkers. This contribution to civilization was really and truly made by Egyptians and the African continent, but not by the Greeks of the European continent. We sometimes wonder why the people of Africa and the city found themselves in such a social play as they do, but the answer is plain enough. He says that had it, been, had it not been for this drama of Greek philosophy and its actors, the African continent would have had a different reputation and would have enjoyed a status of respect among the nations of the world. So that means that because of what happened by the Greeks taking our knowledge in ancient Africa, or their theft of African history, now 
The whole entire world thinks that African people never accomplish anything. 